What's up you guys, my name is Aubrey, this is my channel, and in today's video we're gonna be talking about what you should do before listing your car on Turo. We're gonna be talking about what you should do basically between the time of buying your car or figuring out which car you want to rent on Turo and actually listing that car on Turo. So if you're somebody who wants to make the most money as possible, if you're somebody that wants to make sure the process and the business is smooth and without any bumps or hurdles, then this video is for you. So let's get started. Now you guys may be thinking that whenever it comes to listing a car on Turo, all it does is come down to going onto the website, listing your car, taking a few photos, and then you're good to go. But the reality is, is that actually isn't the case. And there are some things that you should have planned and worked out before even listing your car. And these are some things that can really possibly discourage hosts because they can cause some unnecessary headache. The first of this is recalls. Now recalls are something that could be detrimental to your Turo fleet because the fact is Turo actually scans their cars for recalls. And if they detect a recall, they will automatically delist your car from the platform. Now this will happen one of two ways. Number one is if you have a car that is already listed on the platform and it's been going on rentals, it's been making you money. If Turo detects that that car has a recall, they will then unlist that vehicle and they will send a notification to you letting you know that the car has been unlisted, why it's been enlisted and how you can go about getting it relisted. This has happened to me on a number of different occasions. And what ends up happening is you then have to take the car to the dealership. You have to get the recall fixed. You then have to let Turo know that you got the recall fixed. And then once they're able to fact check that, they can then relist your car. But if you're somebody who just got a new car for Turo and you go to list that car on Turo, Turo actually won't allow you to do that if there is an open recall. So before you even go to list your car on Turo, before you even go through the steps of doing this, it is a good idea to double check with the car manufacturer that there are no open recalls for that vehicle because there is nothing worse than sitting down at your desk, getting excited to list this car for Turo to start making some money and then finding out that it actually can't be listed because of an open recall. Another example of this that can be a huge headache and it's something that should absolutely be avoided at all costs is unintentionally buying a car with an open recall that doesn't have a resolution for the recall. A really notable example of this is the Takata airbag. U.S. safety regulators say millions of additional cars on the road right now could have potentially deadly airbags. You guys may be familiar with the Takata airbag recall. Basically, Takata airbag is an airbag manufacturer for a ton of vehicle manufacturers. And there is a recall issued for these airbags because the airbag was basically like making the inside of a car like a bomb. It was like projecting shrapnel inside of the car whenever a airbag went off. So there was of course a recall because of this, but the bad thing was that there wasn't a resolution or a fix for the airbag right away. And in some cases, car manufacturers waited six months, a year, sometimes longer for these recalls to be fixed. Now you may be asking what happens if I have a Turo car that has a recall that doesn't have a fix for it? Well, nothing. You can't list that car. You can't rent that car until there is a fix for that recall, which means that if you're somebody who buys a new car for Turo, it has an open recall that doesn't have a fix. You can't do anything with that car until that fix is made. So that is something that can be a huge issue if you are a new host that has a new car and you should absolutely make sure that this is resolved and that there are no open recalls before even listing your car on Turo. You will avoid a lot of headaches. Number two is to decide which type of key exchange method are you going to go with? Are you going to do the remote key exchange? Or are you going to do an in-person key exchange? An in-person key exchange is whenever you actually meet the guest in person, you chat with them a bit, you confirm their ID and their identity, and then you give them the car. This is something that can work well depending on how many cars you have and the schedule that you have and the availability that you have to be able to meet guests in person. But it is something that can be extremely time consuming and I personally don't recommend it. The second option is my favorite option, and that is remote. That basically means that you actually won't be with the guest in person when they go to your vehicle. Instead, you'll have either a lockbox or a remote locking and unlocking system that allows for you to unlock the car remotely, and this is how the guest will get access to the key. This is, in my opinion, the best route to go down. It is certainly the most passive, I think it's the most scalable, and it is the one that I personally use. Now, I've talked about the pros and the cons of both of these in a lot of different videos, so I won't touch on that here, but I think that it is important to figure out which route you want to go down. And I think it's important to figure out what your process is going to be. How are the guests going to get to your car? What is that process going to look like? Are you going to meet them in person? Are you going to give them a lockbox? You should have that decided before you rent your car at Ontario. That way your process is predefined and you don't have to worry about that once a rental comes. Another thing that you should definitely have thought out is how you're going to approach maintenance. You would be surprised at how overwhelming maintenance can get for a Turo fleet, even a fleet of just a couple of cars 
yours requires a lot of maintenance work. And if you don't keep an eye on maintenance, the cost of maintenance can really rack up quickly. Now, this is something that I myself am still perfecting to this day. I have not found something that works perfectly, but I have some sort of process in place. For me and HP, we personally have a whiteboard in our garage that will remind us of some maintenance that needs to be done or maintenance that may be coming up. We also use just traditional shop style stickers that we stick on windows, letting ourselves know whenever we did an oil change. Also, whenever we're doing our monthly P&Ls, we make sure to record the mileage of each and every vehicle each and every month. That way we can ensure that the mileage isn't getting out of hand before we can do an oil change. Now there is no right or wrong way to go about maintenance. I don't think there's like a perfect formula that you can pursue, but I think that it's important to at least have some sort of idea or some sort of process in place. And then you can improve upon and you can evolve that process as time goes on and as you become a more experienced Turo host. But you will want to have something in mind before renting your car or else you run the risk of getting behind on maintenance. And on the same topic of maintenance is being prepared with maintenance as well. This is an important lesson that can really make or break some of your profit margins. In fact, this is a lesson that I myself have been having trouble learning because I continue to make the same mistake, but it is to be stocked up on maintenance items that you definitely will need. Things like oil filters, oil, windshield wipers. These are things that if you buy at a local O'Reilly's or a local AutoZone are going to be significantly more expensive. And if you know that you need them, it's a really good idea to buy them cheaper. For example, if I go to O'Reilly's and I buy an oil filter for my Toyota Yaris, I may pay eight, nine bucks for that. But if I go online and I buy one from Toyota directly, this may cost me three, $4. It's a 50% price cut. Now I know what you guys may be thinking. $4 is $4. It's not going to make or break the bank. But the reality is, is that it absolutely could make or break the bank. $4 times 10 is $40 every single time you change an oil. And if you do that 10 times a year, that's $400. That's a lot of money that you're leaving on the table simply because you are not prepared. And with things like oil changes, you know that you're going to have have to do them. So you may as well just buy the oil in advance. Amazon is a great route to go down because they oftentimes have sales on their oil. And if they don't have sales and they're still cheaper and it's a high quality oil, we get all of our oil from Amazon in bulk. We'll buy like $500 worth of oil at a time. And that's something that has really saved us money in the long run. Another thing that you should absolutely have planned out before you list your first car, really ideally before you even buy your first car is an exit strategy. It's incredibly important to have some sort of exit strategy in place, whether it be because the business model simply isn't working out or because you simply don't want to do it anymore. Whatever reason you want to exit Turo, and maybe the day will never come where you want to exit, you should have some sort of idea in mind about how you will go about doing that. Because the thing that you do not want to end up happening is you don't want to have yourself over leveraged in your Turo business and then feel stuck in this business model. For example, if you buy 10 cars and all those cars are financed at a dealership price, you really can't exit Turo because you have 10 car payments that you now have to make and you need to use Turo in order to afford those cars because without Turo, you can't afford that car. But if you buy all of your cars cash and you buy them below market value, then your exit strategy is quite clear. You should have an idea of how you want to exit cars, how you want to exit Turo as a whole. That way, if you're ever faced with a decision of, is this worth it? You have the ability to leave if you want to. There is nothing worse than feeling trapped in a business and having an exit plan will allow you the peace of mind to know that you have the control and you can ultimately do whatever you want. And lastly is something that is not only relevant to Turo, but is relevant to every single aspect of any of our lives. And that is the fact that things change, things evolve, and you need to be prepared for that. And Turo is no different. This is of course something that is so relevant to every aspect of our lives, but it is also incredibly relevant to Turo. I hear all the time hosts talk about how today in 2021, we are in a bubble, the rental car market is insane and things will return to normal. And when that happens, all of the hosts that have recently joined Turo will end up drowning. And though I don't think that this is accurate, I also don't think it is totally inaccurate either. Things are going to change. Prices are probably going to go down and the Turo market will probably slow down along with it. But the reality is things have been changing with Turo for years. Policies have changed, rules have changed, the profit margins have changed as well. And you need to be prepared for that and you need to be able to have the flexibility to grow with new business models. 
For example, in 2017, whenever I joined Turo, you could charge a $200 late fee. If a guest was late returning your car, you could charge $50 per hour up until four hours after the car was due, which means that if a guest was four hours late returning your car, you made $200. You also could charge mileage for $3 per mile. So for example, if you had a car and a guest went 100 miles over, you could charge $3 per mile, which came out to $300. And you know what? People did it. People charged $3 per mile for really low quality cars and they were making a ton of money doing it. But a lot of hosts abused this system and as a result, Turo changed the policy and now you can't charge anywhere near that amount. I think for my Toyota Yaris, I make like four cents per mile. It's something so negligible, it's ridiculous. The point of me saying this is that if I was a host that relied on those $3 per mile excess mileage fees in order to make a profit, I would have died the moment that Turo changed that policy. If I counted on guests, being late returning my cars for each and every rental. That way I make that extra 200 bucks. I would have drowned whenever they changed that policy. There are so many policy changes that they've made over the years that have really had a significant impact on hosts. But the reality is, even though these changes negatively affected the host pocket, they were really changes that needed to be made because they are changes that got rid of these toxic hosts. But I'm not gonna lie, some of these changes did make me a bit sad, even though I realized they were for the best. Ultimately, the point I'm trying to make here is that Turo changes, business changes, and the way that you need to make money will change as well. Turo today in August of 2021 will not be the same as Turo in August of 2022 or 2023 or 2024. The Turo business model will evolve, rules will change, policies will be adjusted, and you need to be prepared to adjust with that. If you are not prepared to do that, then you simply should not join Turo. And coming to terms with this reality before you even list your car and having a plan in place for when these changes happen is something that is incredibly important. Ultimately though, you guys, I wanted to make this video because I think that there are some misconceptions with Turo and I think that a lot of these misconceptions need to be squashed before people even join the Turo platform. If you do what I've discussed in this video, as well as a number of things I've discussed in other videos, you will be setting yourself up for success in the Turo platform. But these things specifically that I've talked about are things that you should either be prepared for or you should have planned out before even listing your car. If you do that, you will be setting yourself up for success and you will have a good time on the Turo platform. Like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. I would greatly appreciate it. And while you guys are at it, make sure to check out the car sharing masterclass. It is my class that teaches you guys how to run a car sharing business exactly with the business model I use with my fleet. And like always, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.